Okay, so it's been a day or two since I made that first version, this one that we're looking at right here, uh, of the character, and I have just a lot of thoughts um, uh, on where to go with her next, um, to the point where this is nice, but there's a lot of problems, and I think it would be best suited for me to go into a second iteration. It's not something I was really hoping to do with this series, but it's just, you know, for the betterment of the character as she is right now. Um, a couple of notes. Uh, let's jump in here to our original sort of things. This I just want to write out a couple of the things that I am looking to fix now. So she's got a face holder place. Um, one of my biggest issues is still with the head and face, sort of a plainness to the to it. Yeah, there's some expressiveness. She she isn't looking nearly as uh, stuck up as I was hoping for. That the sort of the vanity and stuff that we we're looking to add to the character that she's looking down on others, basically. Um, that kind of juxtaposition of a a beggar looking down on people. Uh, I'd like a little bit more asymmetry in the design, just because. As, as put together as this one garment is of hers, the rest of her, you know, this is a good start, I think. But the more I can do that, the better. Um, and then a couple of quick things. I had an idea for two new, uh, new gadgets. And I think, actually, before I talk about what those are, um, that whole bard but also... Thing was not coming through with this. She's like basically like a character with a flute cane, and the rest of her is completely detached from the bard identity. Um, maybe that's over exaggerating it a little bit, but I think the bard identity be, can can be pushed a little bit further. And also, I was thinking along the lines of what that, but also is um, because being a bard is not unique to this character in the world. So her secondary identity. Um, or maybe even the, the primary one with Bard being second, if everyone's a Bard, basically, is as a scout. Um, and I think that there's, there's not really a scout archetype so much, but an idea kind of between sort of a rogue and a ranger, sort of a... So she's from far away gathering reconnaissance, but also can be a little bit stealthy and things like that. So... The new gadgets that I was thinking about were a crossbow, and this is a little bit tricky. Um, this might be something that just looks better in my head than it does on paper, but if we're looking at a crossbow from the top here, my idea was, so we've, we've got um, the treble clef in music. Looks like this, I think. Out like that, maybe a little bit squatter. That's about what a treble clef looks like. Okay, and then we have the bass clef, which is just like uh, about like that with the two dots. So my idea was for kind of almost to take this and turn it on its side for our crossbow. We go in, and this line is straight across, sort of where the drawstring is, but then we loop back like this, kind of like a symmetrical version of that treble clef with um, some kind of spiral kind of right here that maybe isn't as functional as it is like just suggesting that spiral in the treble clef. Okay, and then we come up in that, that piece right here that... I didn't realize this until, like, I think we saw someone demonstrating one of these in person. Um, but it's a, oh, I don't know if the base clef is actually, I don't think it's a smiley face like that. I think it's actually, before you comment, I think it actually goes here behind it. I grabbed a piece of the treble there. Um, this goes over here. Yeah, so this piece right here on the crossbow is, like, where they actually step down and pull the crossbow back in order to redraw the string. And then it latches, of course. So a latch right here for the 
the bolts, but we, I think in the sort of key pose of our character, it's going to limit our action posing because we're, I want to change the pose. That's, that's another new pose, more dynamic pose. Uh, but she's not going to be like at the ready, you know, with the crossbow, right? You're, because it's, it'll kind of detract from this straight line here. If this was bent back here, I think, I think the, the motif we're going for will be too subtle at that point. Okay. And then just like a little bit of a, a scope on top here. Um, and that scope brings me to the second idea that I had, if it works, which is a telescope, you know, being a scout, being far away, a telescope that is sharing those same aesthetic things as our cane and is a flute itself. So the little buttons, and if this is like uber goofy, if this just doesn't work, that's fine. But it's it's an idea. Yeah, something like that. So that way she's got some range. She can she can go a bit further away. Okay. So let me because we're on our correction layer right now, we'll save that for now. Um and I do just need to put a better effort forward with the face. That's kind of a main thing. So I'm going to just really quickly start uh, a new layer here that we just really quickly get a take another few bites at the pose, um, maybe going a little bit more extreme than the one that we have. Uh, let me hide this all together for now. Let's move our old one over. Just give us some more room. Okay. So. What it would be nice to do is take a big S here. Have our character kind of looking over this way. And what if her shoulders kind of came here? Have the pelvis about here. She's mid-step. That makes sense. Hmm. Okay. And maybe this arm... This was a, I should have put this line in first before those recent ones, but this arm here, would be leaning on, ooh, backwards, arcane, like that. So that way she's walking with a bit of purpose, right, a bit of cool and casual air to her. Okay. That'd be nice. Um, and then just sort of the crossbow is hanging to her side about here. Maybe the, the hand is there. I don't know if that's exciting enough as a pose. Okay. Well, it's something. What else can we do here? So we are kind of, we're not starting at scratch because we've got a lot of information from our original pose and drawing and stuff. So I never necessarily consider this a loss. Um, it, it's sort of a lengthening of the process, but that's about it. Um, let's see, what else could we do? I don't see, just having these two, the crossbow is a sort of a two-handed object. And at the moment with her having two objects, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Uh, 
Um, no reason we can't have the skirt kind of moving with her there here. I know the bustle is probably providing a lot of structure, but maybe it's only to a certain extent or something, right? It'd be kind of nice to have this movement out the back. It kind of follows our S a little bit. That might add sort of to our excitement some too. That'd be nice. The hair was so spiky the way I had it before. The, the key thing is we just don't want volume and we can do a lot of like frizzing. Hair coming out there. Yeah, I like that pose. Let's we'll see what we can do with it. Let's do a few other things. What could we do with our two objects? Um, maybe she could be leaning on this cane with this hand. Again, I've got like kind of the cross legs here. Cane would need to be bigger. Longer right there. And I guess you could have the, the hand up in the air. See, this this looks drawn, right? The crossbow looks drawn if it's up in the air like that. And we can't have the string pulled back. And we do want sort of the musical nature of the crossbow to be visible. So maybe. Can try that. Hmm. The pose is crazy. Uh, let's take another pass at this leg section. Maybe that. Kind of standard stuff. Kind of what our pose is already doing here. And we, we want to do a little bit more than that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this one a lot. Yep, yep, yep. Uh oh, losing our multi touch. <laughs> Always fun. Yeah, I, I like the idea, I, th I think now that I've sort of figured out with the skirt moving or uh, kind of blowing out a bit, I, I'd like that idea to kind of continue. Let's see. The other thing I'm thinking is if I'm, if I'm getting a little claustrophobic with my props, um, if, you know, I've already got this scope here. What if this telescope was kind of coming on the end of this? Um, and for whatever reason, we either kind of extend the crossbow out a bit in length, or it's just sort of one of those, like... It, like, it's, you know, you, this section, maybe it collapses to a certain point, but then uh, the scope, you can kind of... And this is very silly. Look what Brooks has done. Look what Brooks has done. He's made everything through her scope so much smaller. Okay. Um, yeah, but if we, if I just, I think this will work. If we just come in here 
and now we've got more of a I don't know I think there's something more of a, a heft to this crossbow item um, this would probably end around this point although it's probably being overlapped by this and then we just add a spot for this to latch so if we work with that Maybe that's where we'll, between that and the movement of the cloth, maybe we're, we'll actually get somewhere. This might be too flat, um, like we're looking kind of just in a poor perspective. Let's see, she'd be holding it like that, right? Make sure we get this visible. And then this. It's something. Could be kind of cool. Uh, what about if we were messing with our main guy here? Let's see. Our other pose. Could we bring this out? It would help the amount of things we have kind of clumping up in one area here to have a telescope flute on the back. Hmm. A bit longer, right? Uh, can her arm even... We need to bring the arm forward if she's doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's another aspect of this, too, is that we now have two long, thin objects like this. So, you know, what validity is there in maybe Xing them over each other or something, right? I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, but I like that a lot better. A lot better than trying to, like, fit this flute onto the belt somewhere. And we don't even know if that's possible the way things are. So that'd be nice. Okay. And here's the only thing is I kind of like the drop here. In this pose, I still think it's a little flat. Um, maybe we should... Let's, Bite the bullet and do another here. That's, uh, hmm. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is, uh, this, this kind of feels like a, what do you call that? The circus ringmaster kind of. There's a sort of showmanship to this pose with the cane. Does that make sense? That's kind of cool. I'd like to make this work. This is cool. This has like a lot of uh, flow to it. And then we just bring our skirt over there. Oh, that's so cool. It's such a good, I, I like this pose so much more. 
I mean, you could argue that it's the facial expression, how like really generic, uh, very simplified face, but then again, was it because the pose facilitated it? Okay, now we just have a kind of a big visual block of multi-touch that we can't use. I feel like this sells the story of the character a bit more too, that she's kind of more on the reserved and held back side. Hmm. Okay. We, we broke it and breaking is a good thing. The, uh, the idea of breaking a character or breaking a story is a good thing. It means you finally got it right. And I don't really know the origin of that term. Otherwise I'd give it to you. But breaking is a good thing. It's like kind of having a breakthrough really is, is, is what the idea is. Can we add some sort of, uh, sort of, I don't know what you call that, a, a grip, something that kind of tapers back, wah, tapers back on the end here, we'll do that for her, and so now let's just make sure that we kind of have this, well, we can do that in the next step, really. Cool. Cool. Guys. I've been really unhappy with this character over here. Let me just flip it. See if it's really too overdone right now. If she needs to take a step. Not really. I mean this head can come back over. This is a point. I mean you gotta you gotta exaggerate somewhere, right? Um Let's see. Honestly, no. I mean, could we... What happens when we kind of shift everything over so that the weight fits a bit more? Is that awful? Is that... ruining the extreme aspect of our pose? Hmm. Also, our hair is going to be moving this way. Which she will enjoy. <laughs> She's all for that dramatic movement of the hair. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's nice. I'm. I'm. I'm ha this is the first time I've really been happy with this character. I think that. I think because I've been trying to do this sort of efficient move through the process. I've been taking shortcuts in the interest of time for you guys, so you're not watching forever. Um, but those shortcuts, as I've talked about before, don't end well a lot of the time. And so you, you, you end up taking longer. Um, and if I'd kind of done more exploratory stuff in the beginning, I might not have gotten to this place, but that's okay. It's what it is. I'm just happy to I'm kind of getting somewhere. And it really has to do with that personality, right? And just the movement through the character. Um, so we still want to do a better job on the face and carry over some more asymmetrical elements. Oh, her ruffle is going to be blowing in the wind. Guys, wind is the best. Okay, so let's uh, let's double check our anatomy and our construction a bit here. Um, and I want the face to even be rounder, I think, than I had it here, which was already pretty round. Um, by by which I mean I don't want to do a ton of little chin jags and stuff out. I just kind of want it to be distinguished or uh, not distinguished jaw. That's kind of a different thing. Um, just a a place delineating the jaw and then very round chin coming down. And we'll focus on the face more in a second. It's kind of the same as we did with this version over here. We 
we'll build the skull and stuff first, and then we'll kind of move down the body before we really focus on the face at all. Um, and I do want to give myself some leeway in the face to like push that like stuck upness. So right now the new head that I've drawn is looking a little, um, it's like straightforward, right? We want, we want the chin up and the eyes down. Okay. Nope. One thing. Keep there. That's fine. Okay. I'm gonna move down the neck. This is where we are we're gonna get a lot of extra material in the garment and the ruffle coming up here. So then let's sketch this out. Let's see. Like so. You bring the bottom of at least the garment, even if it's not quite hitting her waist, to about there. And, hmm. We can build the ruffle from here. Are we too, are we sticking too far out? If our, if our pelvis is really here, no. Oh, I should have been doing that too, guys. I'm, I'm moving too to top to bottom here when I should be building out some of the these forms a little bit more effectively. Okay. And I just want to make sure that this leg here, I, I like them together, but we just, we don't want them to, well, really we, we want to make sure that our ground plane is good. So let's draw our feet. Touching the ground. What have I done here? Yeah. And remember, we're going to go a little bit like because of the banding, we're going a little bit thicker than her actual. Leg dimensions? What is happening here, Brooks? What have you done with your foot? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Bring this knee up here. Our leg. Um, I mean, it's going to get buried by the skirt, but let me just find the edge of this leg at least so that we are building with something here with the skirt okay uh, let's see let's turn this off what does that look like when we flip multi touch is killing me lately I don't know if it is like a procreate issue or a, I need a new iPad issue um, there's a little bit ooh, the legs didn't translate well from our pose. Maybe they maybe they did. Maybe it's a construction issue and not a pose issue. Mm, but they're not it's not strong right now. I think because it would be nice to see the back of this knee. Hmm. I know there's something wrong with it, but I can't see it right now, which is a common problem. I think it's the lack of taper because this this leg is tapering down from the femur and this leg isn't, but we can make it do that. Let's go here. Remember kids, if something looks wrong, you're, you're doing good. Knowing, I mean, drawing it right the first time is ideal, but if you draw something and then realize there's a problem with it and then fix it, you've done, you're at like 95% awesome at that point. Uh, 
I don't need to delineate this foot too much. Is that part of the problem? Is I'm am I'm I'm blocking legs when I should be thinking about bandages more? No. It's just a bad bad sketch. Hmm. Okay. Let's try the arms real quick and then we'll come back to that because we know it's in the right place. Okay. Oh, that face is so like I know it's not what our face is going to end up looking like, but it just reads so well. Okay. Does that work? Construct, construct, even if it's not what the clothes do. And what's this hand do? We come out here, right? Basically, not a perfect hand, but basically, okay. And this is on top of the flute. We bring our flute down. I think we should keep the original line here. Okay. That'll be segmented as our old one was. We'll refer to our old one when we can, just because it's kind of perfect the way it is right now. Um, let's see. Do I just do I be so bold as to get rid of the whole leg? That could kind of work, right? If our knee hits there, if our other leg's here, it kind of, I think it, what that is doing is masking the problems I've done, I've made with the leg in front, but it's not the worst. Also, this perspective grid is so approximate that it's actually hindering us, even though I should have started with the feet and built upwards. That's usually a really good way to get those things right. Okay, and I think I'll just swing this this puppy around. I, was that even the, was that just the problem? I wasn't defining the calf from the front? Because usually you shouldn't be doing that. I say shouldn't, but I think it was the problem. Okay. Um, oh, the ruffle, the hair, it's also perfect. Okay. Let's add our arm here. And yeah, hand is in a good place. Oh, come on, man. And kind of how that, how's that working? It's, um, it's our, it's our far hand here, right? So we're gripping here and Coming out like that, I think. You think or you know? Were you dragging or rushing? Okay. This can come up like this, right? I think that's the point where we decided, no, it needs to be further back. And I think, I mean, there's an amount of balance that we want in the, in the arm, too. This hand should be further, closer to the arm a bit. Just make it a little bit more believable. Drag the straight part in. Come up, cut in with our, our rest. Um, is it the butt of, like, a rifle or a crossbow? Do you call it a butt? Please don't content restrict me for calling something a butt. demonetized for butt. It's, it's my story. It's the largest measure of barrel. 
but all right. Okay, um, wonky perspective here because I'm following the old sketch. Like that's one of those things you don't want to do is, especially with an a uh, non-organic object like this is, you don't want to follow the under sketch verbatim. Um, and I'm not gonna focus on it right now. I think this is a, an element that we will come back to in an upper layer. Um, let me just make sure that we're, this is too far down. So let's thin it up some. Whoo, that, that finger. Wow. Usually I do better with kind of drawing mitts out like this. And then you can add fingers to that. Come on, man. Work with me. I think this needs to come out up top here. I think that's that taper needs to come in. Um, hopefully she's, that's a nice balance in the hand. I don't think it is. I think we need to just pretend this keeps going. I think that's the only way to sell it balance wise. That way it's kind of tucked into the like between the arm and the body. Okay. And we might be actually like too long at this point, but let's... Telescope up. From our top point, like let's pretend this is our top. And we do want it at an angle so that we can see our treble clef idea right yeah that's plenty of room let's uh... about there it's not it's not right or it's not a hundred percent accurate but it's close okay we can cut this down some so at this point we've just we haven't really like we've added length and reduced length to the overall thing to a point where it's just tucked up this way more, this way more. Little, uh, they're basically umlauts now that they're sideways, the marks on the base clef. Okay, let's uh, do this again. I think the pose is pretty good, but then like the wind just, just totally sells it. Which is a secondary action, but for a character, I think that's what's cool about it is if you have a character who's very like supposed to be cool and calm and collected, not allowing much to get to them, um, I think showing that things around them are moving around like the wind is a nice way to juxtapose. Okay, so a nice little base thing going here. We can, again, just since we're gonna move up to a new layer, uh, carry over some of these ideas. I don't wanna do too much like redraw, redraw, redraw with the energy here. But we'll, we'll keep that. Oh, that's gonna read flat. Okay, we'll figure out the specifics of this in a bit, but for now, with this moving here. Yeah, see now, with this perspective, we can get a little bit more of our, our wrap back with the garment, which is cool. And a, a line coming down here. It's pretty nice, that's bad. Let's uh, do that. It's not bad. I like. Uh, I appreciate those. The comments from the last video. Uh, a lot of people going like, "Oh man, don't." 
lot of people saying a lot of things scrutiny wise but on the nicer end of things where people like every decision you make is awesome don't don't beat yourself up about it and what's funny is like i appreciate that but i mean part of the strength of the work or the job is to be constantly like self-editing and auditing and kind of increasing your own personal taste and stuff which is also that kind of lends itself to when when you finally finish a project like this or you finally get to a point where you've you've done all you can thinking wise and you you want to move on to the next thing seeing especially unsolicited like well you should have done this and this and sort of crowdsourcing opinions uh, it's kind of like well, I, I mean i'm already on to the next thing I, I put that i did that to myself already um which is funny that also the the misinterpretation of statements i've made about uh cynicism that people then think i'm talking about criticism um, it's not so much, oh, you know, you can't take, you can't take criticism because it's, I'm either looking for it from, from mentors or other artists, or I'm, you know, doing it to myself in a lot of ways. And I think a lot of artists can, can relate to that. So like the whole being too fragile for criticism thing doesn't work too well if you're trying to make this stuff work. Okay, uh, I am still drawing on my old layer. I will start a new layer in one second, grab some water on a quick break, and I will keep going adding detail to our character. I'm hydrated, I'm hating this face, uh, but, it's, but it's going somewhere. So let's go ahead and hide our under layer, let's see if there's anything important that we're missing. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold on to that face while I can. Um, I mean, there's a certain amount of structure that we want to add to her skull. Let's see. Let's go. Let's see what we can make from the other direction. We'll build our sockets in, even though we're looking to go more um, with like an eastern face, an Asian face. So the sockets are not going to be as pronounced. Um, however, they do provide us with a bit of structure to start with. So, yeah, we kind of, we, we like this like non-plussed, like, <clears throat> we don't want the there's a way to make this very, uh, like, worried, right, with, with an eyebrow that does that. But instead, we're just kind of like, oh, unimpressed. Hmm. It's raising. The brow's raising. But that's... It's almost mockingly, right? So we've got an eye coming in here. You can kind of... What's interesting is a, is that the shape of these eyes. There's a, a lot of um, with any eye. There's there's overlap. I think with with the from with the top lid from the bottom, and I think over here, when I did this eye here, it, it very easily looks like a mascara wing tip. What I did here because there's not really a a curve coming up there. You can obviously apply makeup and stuff, but. Oh my goodness, I'm I'm gonna throw my iPad through a window if it doesn't multi-touch accurately, consistently. And that's, uh, that's the most first world problem thing I've said all day. So, and that's another thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this, um, Let's see, we're cutting across the top here with the lid. I can't really tell how this looks right now. 
Um, it's not something I have a ton of experience with, is this style of eye, and I've kind of been looking for a place to practice it. I just, I don't know, there's, I just love the, the variety of human faces and how different cultures and backgrounds can look with the same bone and skin and muscle. Just really awesome. And sort of like how to stylize those things without like, obviously you, you never want to tread into to stereotypes and stuff, but sort of how do you, how do you hint at it? Okay, so we've got a, a nose here, um, a nose that really doesn't bridge as as prominently as, like, say, a European nose. And let's kind of let's. Uh, I, I just want to look at this real quick. Is this better than, or properly emulating the eyes that we already have? No, it's. do some work. It's not terrible. Come in here, but I think the, the we don't even want to we don't want to see any white in between the lid and the pupil. Just want it to close right there like this. That's how we get nonplussed. Okay. Almost there, yeah. See any any shape like that, we just want to like flatten and be careful of sort of which way you're angling it. Okay. Um can we do a little bit more with this bottom part of the lid? I think yeah, just, just deharsh that a bit. Cut in here. And get rid of our socket information. We really don't need it, unless we wanted to keep a little bit for the nose here. Okay. And then we just, again, we're, we're keeping a round face. We don't want any sudden changes. So let's go kind of more. Let's come out. Out and down. Let's see. I just I just want to make sure that I still actually. I mean the the shape I've already got in there is pretty good for the head. As long as I can blow it up to about there. Okay, I'm gonna paste it on a new layer. I'll take a sip of seltzer while that takes a first world problem long amount of time. Oof. Usually not this difficult. Okay. About there, what do we think of this? It's just, it's hard to beat that original <laughs> expression. There's a bit of side eye to it too that I think we'll want to add. So let's come into where our pupil is and just kind of surgically move things around. And I think a little bit of um, creasing just kind of right in this area. right under the lid. It 
Don't want to make the pupils. Or really what's what we're actually drawing here is the whole interior of the eye. And when I come back, I'll add a, sort of a brown border to the pupil, the iris. And again, we're showing too much white space there. Gonna come in and cut for definition. Which I know I just talked about white space, but I meant in the in the eye. This is just creating a negative line. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff in here we don't need because we've used the old head. Nose might be a little bit too big, possibly. Let's see what we can do. Might have the nose come in even more or start at a wider place in the top of the no, because that's where our socket is. So we'll just, we'll actually just get rid of that line completely because there's not a huge ridge kind of riding up the the place to the socket as much as there would be if the sockets were recessed a bit more. Come in, we'll swoop out a bit and cut some of this down. Mm. It's kind of coming out too far. About there, right? Seem right. And instead of this line right here, sometimes I'd much rather do something like this. Just depends. Um, this instantly ages the character up, what I'm doing, but I'm just adding a bit of a, a muzzle shape. The sort of the line from the mouth up to the ridges on either side of the nose. Um, it's kind of a 3D modeling thing that I tend to do because that's uh, where you put edge loops in with a 3D model. So how much do I, can I emulate that original line there? I feel like we can even, we can shrink the eyes even more. We can we can to match the original. Let's see, a few things to change. Let's bring that down. Hmm. What are we gonna do with your nose? Really, if we just only showed where it ended, I think that's actually a much better way to go about, not because it's, you know, you're not missing that info, but it's just slight enough that we don't want to show it via line art. So that's, that's helpful. I think we can, ah, the angle of our eyebrow we can come down with if rotate still works. Man, I love procreate so much, but this issue the last few months has been rough and I don't know what party is at fault here, so 
not and also other artists that use the iPad Pro and Procreate I, are not having the same issue as me, so it's all me. Don't let this dissuade you from trying it out if you're interested. Okay, let's cut some of this here. We want to make sure that we're actually coming to the edge of our face. And with the roundness, we want a nice enough angle coming, cutting back this way. Okay. So that it doesn't look like an oversized jaw. Just want to take another bite at the bottom of this lid. Oops, wrong layer. Okay. And the face is obviously where the attention usually goes to, just kind of on a biological level, where we want to see the face of a person first. And so in illustrations, it's where we usually go to. It's where the expression is for the character. So we end up spending a lot more time on that detail uh, than we do on other areas. So things will move fast as we kind of progress here. Okay, add sort of an edge to the pupil here, same here, color it back in a bit. We could of course just add Consider that the pupil and add iris outside of it. Yeah, it's pretty close, actually. I like that a lot. We could, uh, I think, actually keep this nose there. Actually, yeah, the less info that we have coming up here, the flatter it ends up looking on the face, which is to our advantage. Okay. She also needs hair. We'll fix that. We'll bring it in ASAP. And we just need to fix the ear positioning now that we've brought the jaw up and chosen where the eyes go. You usually kind of want the ears to hit the top and bottom of your eye area and begin here at the jaw. We might not see much of her ear. Let's see, let's bring it up a bit. Okay. Oh, this is gonna look, this is gonna look really cool once we get our full costuming going. Okay, and we just want to sort of fill out the lips some, make this shape more believable. Got all my stuff here on different layers for added confusion. I think if I keep it kind of a straight thin line, it doesn't read as much as a sort of wrinkle, but a natural progression of where the eye is. So that's kind of nice. And if we kind of make a part here, we could maybe... Hmm. Bring the hair out and down like this. Add some extra strands coming in, make that extra strands. I'm going to do some flipping because I'm not 100% sure this is right at the moment. Mm. 
Hmm. The face is like almost there. I think it's this position of this eye over here. Just needs to move a tiny bit. There, and we kind of have that. So remember, I was kind of talking about sort of a, a shape of the face like that. Um, and now that we have an expression, I'm I'm okay with that changing a bit for the for the good of everything else. Overall, just really happy with kind of the progress, even already over the last one. And I'm, I'm at a point where I'm like, yeah, this is actually, this was, this is close to the concept that I originally had, which is good. Okay, let's, uh, let's erase some of this skull we don't need. And we can move on now to some neck. And let's actually, did we ever? No. <laughs> we never really start a new layer, so let's do that. We'll call our pasted face that new layer. Bring our brow up and in. This is a tricky shape, especially with the eyebrow already kind of coming down right here. Okay, and just follow the rest for here, as we know we've been refining it. Let's see, what if we... <laughs> trying one more thing here. It's actually, I like that a lot. I don't know if it matches our original, but it's got a disdain to it, I think. Yeah. Just gonna make sure it doesn't happen on this side. Let's do, yeah, let's make sure the lip Separate from this line here, maybe? No, we'll keep it. Keep both. There's <laughs> a lot of tweaking I'm doing here. Forgive me. Yeah, we're just, we're trying to scale up sort of the expression from that really simplified one into a more real face. So I'm just kind of taking a couple extra bites because this is still so good. I think, I think we need to still keep some of this. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll still leave hair for last and bring this down a little bit more. Okay, coming into neck now and this 
at this point, like kind of adding the line art aspect, even if we're still going to sell shade um, or do that very kind of flat rendering style that we were planning on and talking about before, um, it's still going to be a little bit tedious at this point. Um, I want to make sure I'm matching my reference here, which kind of was curving down like this. And that's kind of coming back. Yeah, we don't want it. the torso to be kind of, or the rib cage to be deformed there. We want it to still be there. Um, let's see, we had the same over here where we came down. Let's see. And what did I establish on the old one? Is it sort of cuts a small V here. So let me let me use this neck skin line and uh, we'll leave it right on the outside. I'll cut the inside of our our sweater, I guess, the outer portion out, and that it's sort of create a v-shape that kind of tapers in to the other garment until we can't see it which would be I think a little earlier maybe about here seems about right And this comes up around and back. Uh, we could even add some height to this collar if we wanted to. Uh, and we're going to, of course, add the ruffle, which is exciting because that's going to be blowing in the wind too. I just like how all this stuff that I had added, like the very draped and layered fabric and stuff is all coming together. Like, oh, of course, I should have been moving it around more. It's all prone to movement, which is awesome. Okay, I just want to check this. Yeah, so we don't have a ton of, let's see, of layering happening there. Instead, we're waiting on this lower, which we'll just, because we created two lines here, uh, go about there. And were we worried about this, we could draw that detail in, except we're not because we have our ruffle. And I want to use this line that came down before. So all the worry I just was putting in about this V-shape and stuff, we get really just the edge of it as actual detail, but that's fine. That's one of the more thankless things is drawing the stuff that eventually gets uh, completely overlapped. Okay. And hopefully we get a nice sense of that shape and everything in here. Let's uh, erase what's underneath. Still a good idea to draw what goes underneath just so that all the things on the other sides that it connects to can be kind of double checked. This I want to bunch up a bit and we want the segment to be a little bit clearer as it intersects the neck. This can be a cloth bit there. Um, I can add a bit of like sort of lace texturing and stuff to it in a bit, but for now I'll just add sort of the, the fabric flow. And yeah, we'll think about kind of adding something kind of lacy on the end. But that's a that's a more detail oriented thing for the next step. Let's follow our 
our line here for the, the middle of this garment as it comes down. Hmm. I think this is contradicting the outer shape here by just a bit. Let's go out. Okay. Hmm. I think it's really should be here. How does that make the ruffle look? I think it balances it even more, right? Let's give it a flip. Shoulders wise, what I'd like to do is, if we're seeing just a little bit of material over here, um, we'll call it sort of that fluffy uh, Lucy shoulder, like Lucy from Peanuts, um, the very ruffled stuff, if that's visible. And if we were doing like a turnaround of the character or something, we could let that info go in there. Um, where's the arm going though? It's kind of comes up to here and to here. So we don't see a, a bunch of this. Really that, that other shoulder is a bit lost on us for now. However, we can come in and wrap with our uh, rags. And we'll, we'll kind of go over that shape assume it's overlapping it. This can be our next. Let's see. Let's do this. We'll go in and make this tatter kind of overlap that way. Then our next one is sort of stick, uh, sticking to, yeah, clinging to the sleeve and is also a bit tattered itself. Although I'd like to see the shape of the arm in there. So let's, let's go up and in. Hopefully that's blowing enough. Yeah. And maybe we'll cut one more across. No, let's a lot of extra. We'll add holes to this one. Okay. Cut down from this line. Cut across from this one. Down. Cross. And let's go to our elbow. It's coming along, it's good. We're uh, just gonna cut that there. And I wanna keep this kinda very fluffy shape or uh, dynamic shape really that I ended up with for the arm. Come in with a cuff that'll be the same material, excuse me, as our lace. And sort of a like, you come in there, you're good, you're good, you're good. It's nice and loose, sort of a, a diamond pattern up would be nice, right? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Cool. Yeah, hopefully the, the, this under garment kind of comes across well. I, I want to kind of hit that line between, you know, gaudy and stuff, but, but refined. And so I just don't want it, there to be too much that's visually busy at that point. Yeah. 
Let's see, this can come up around here. Is that about right? Oh, no. It's about worst. Let's cut our fingers in a bit here. Very uh, manly hands she had there for a second. Let's uh, bring this one up. This might require just kind of a different kind of hand. We'll see in a second. If I can get away with this one or not. Because um, we've got a nice like bend in it here. I just want that to be reflected. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, uh, our other arm, oh boy. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of machinery. Um, let's see what we can do with this real quick. We'll swipe kind of across with our, let's, let's add a layer. It's kind of like a belt right here. And we'll try and intensify and show sort of the, the curve here, the cylindrical nature of the torso and skirt as much as possible because there's a few spots down here where you could just kind of cut straight across, which I don't want to happen. This is a little bit rough. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. And we can come out from there just because we added that belt doesn't mean we can't have some of this. Oh, why did I do that? I was completely ignoring my sketch there and this looks much better. That's probably why this shape was eluding me, too. Okay. Now we're in business. Yeah, that makes more sense. I was like, man, once I put this belt in, there's going to be nothing. Don't want to... You could even tangent in an area like this. So I just want to avoid that a little bit. Okay. Cut in. And over. Now we can add that little belt just as sort of a segment off, right? Not bad. Now we can come out, I think, with this. This sort of bustle area. The wire frame. But like, I think with her, she's it's incomplete, you know, it's not necessarily something that's hanging to the floor, just as she doesn't have layers that hang all the way to the floor. Let's uh, follow this line here with our first section. And I'm just doing clean lines right now, waiting for my everything to go in, and then I'll come back and tatter up the edges. Just want to get the structure right first. Yeah, especially when you're you're coming in and and cutting in and do all doing all these uh, not cutting in but refining like kind of cleaning up and adding this very you know thinner lines. I think that's something I talked about with the that video about why does my sketch look better than my finished piece. Um, but when you're coming in and like making all these little definitive statements, it's hard to maintain like the kind of liveliness 
or energy of something, so that's why I'm glad I had such a lively pose to begin with. And we can kind of keep messing so that that continues to be true. Okay. Some tattering here on the edge of this layer. Hopefully it's not overwhelming. Ooh, that's so uniform. I don't like that. I don't like them all tattering the same way. Uh, can do that there. Let's uh, let's eliminate one of them here. Let's add a, a hole. Some more holes like that. Uh, that's that's better. Okay. I'm starting to go a little quieter as I'm adding this detail, but it, it'll pick back up kind of in, in decision making soon. Because um, I like kind of talking out loud through these things, talking the decision making out loud. Uh, and we're, we're getting back to that point in a minute. Um, just it's, it's smaller and smaller, right? More refining and more refining as we go. So nothing broad that we're still working on. Uh, can we cut in here? Yeah. I think that's what we need. Just for this to work. Now, what is this catching on is the, is the issue? I guess the wireframe, which we have to show. Hmm. It's a bad situation, honestly. Because, I, I mean, we... We have a certain amount and then it, we need this to kind of cut and then can we do that? How much of that are we losing from our original? Yeah, I'd be okay with this one. Uh, doing a more definitive curve out like this, like the original. Okay, so that makes a little more sense. Um, maybe this is part of it too, is this guy that's not, not playing well. Okay. Changing up where these all go without creating any tangents is always fun. Not bad. That might come back to bite me a little bit. So 
So the, the bustle is like a just a cage. It's a it's like a bird cage basically. And we can do some lateral latticing if we want. But ultimately we want kind of our bottom row to all match together. Um, this can come down here. And we want to show maybe some breakage, right? So that why it's not working anymore. And we'll kind of cage these together. So just making sure that they all look right, which they don't. Yeah, so at this point we just, let's do a quick red over. So we're starting here. We've got a, a, a line for the waist. Um, and the bustle is going to come. It's sort of like a like a, um, what is that? It's a kind of like crow from, from Mystery Science Theater, right? So it's like only in the front half, uh, only in the back, rather. So it's, that's what's defining this, and this, and this, and this, and this. But it's not. I think it's all shaped like this. And then we kind of curve. So it's like it's coming out and over. Like that. And then we, uh, no matter how long I make these sort of tongs at the bottom, I just use a brush and decide the curve that they all stop at. And now that's useless because, you know, we can't see it anymore. Um, but I think, I think this one kind of coming across over here and we, we cut the angle of it like that. Okay. That's something I can live with. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. We'll drop that opacity. And coming back to our actual, we'll select the color and follow our guide. Always important to kind of do follow through of where the shapes go and stuff like that. Whew. And we are at a long point in this video. But I think one more part where we kind of finish up the rendering and stuff and we can uh, be happy with this character. Okay. And we'll add one layer over her. In this direction. Can we do that? Does it make sense? Do it around, around the bottom edge like that. Leave an inch or two. Hmm. About like that. Oops. This is uh, such a late addition of a thing here, just to make sure that we get the, the right shape out of the skirt, um, that I, I'm worried about how it comes across. And so I will definitely take like just a few minute break right here from it so that I can look at it immediately with, with fresh eyes um, and then adjust from there because it's important. Okay, all this is hidden behind the leg and stuff like that, but hopefully that's just enough information of the bustle. Cool. Another thing we want to do is carry over the same leg wrapping that we were doing before. Uh, coming back to this eye, 
it's just looking a little bit too like regal if that makes sense and if i kind of skew it up like this does that help or even just tilting but without skewing we tilt in it might be nice we don't want like angry necessarily but like it's in the same realm of expression okay don't know where this came from and let's let's wrap some legs let's uh establish toes first right that is a massive toe one two three one two three <clears throat> all in one shape there one two three four one two three okay and then actually right here we might have a bit of a bridge just because yeah that lines about right this oh hello this line comes down here Again, just as a, I think I talked about this in the last one, the, uh, just the jitter from uh, Tilt is still giving me a little bit of trouble, either because of my lack of experience with it, or just a technical glitch with it. Could be, could be either at different times. Okay, this knee is coming down. We'll hide it behind that tattering there. Come down to this leg. Ah, uh, that was weird. Got to be a little bit more gradual with the curve if you end up actually curving on the front part. Okay. This comes around there. This needs to get fixed just a tad. Okay. And so we're going to come back over this now and do the same thing. We are going to, uh, let's see, let's fix that. Going to add wrapping on the feet. Uh, just because it's going to get confusing, we'll get rid of this dress line here. Okay. And cross this back. Is this here? We're still in view. Good. And we can't have this either. overlapping shapes okay and this is actually not sure what it wants to be either just refine that a bit okay and then uh, let's see wrap up there maybe about there cool and uh, I think what would be nice is actually we get to this point or maybe a, a spot like here. Um, maybe where's a good spot because we don't want to mess with this. But um, a, a section where there's it's actually skin instead of just straight bandage all the time. Um, and I'm not sure where that would best be used. Maybe the spot here. We'll um, come back over here, add some thickness to the bandage wrapping around like this 
and then we'll do the same up here because it's underneath both of these layers. Okay. And then the, the transition between each of these is similar. We just get some thickness on the edge because fabric has material. Okay, and now since that was just our, our one section because it's skin, but otherwise we want to make sure that uh, these are wrapping up. So uh, layers tuck in to the one above it. Not a huge deal. You can kind of come back and erase any part of the original line that's kind of sticking through and making it thicker. And kind of like I did on the last one, just for some amount of clarity, I kind of want to um, not do so much on the foot, just because we want to keep those shapes distinct. Uh, whereas otherwise we're dealing with kind of a very simple cylinder with these legs. Okay, let's go uh, down like here and up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And wrap, wrap. And we're kind of making sure that our bandage lands uh, not in the same spot as one on the other leg, just for both for asymmetry, but also for tangents. We don't want, you know, a line to come and then like go right there and then it's just confusing. Um, this is kind of nice because we've got things that are inherently asymmetrical, otherwise positioning the two of them, we'd have to figure things out, which is nice. We, we've got a foot that's bending here like this, but then another one that we get to look at from this angle, which is nice. And for this one, we'll do the same, wrapping up a bit. And I'll add some texture to these bandages too, so that we know what they are, that they're coarse and I've been saying bandages, but she's not injured. She's just poor. Uh, maybe this spot here can be uh, skin. Okay. And the final wrap there. Awesome. We had a lot less to do on that edge. Okay. Uh, procrastinating has come to an end pretty much. There's just our solid objects and our hair left to do. Let's see. Yeah, like that. Okay. Let's, uh, oops. Racing somehow. Just want to really just procrastinating at this point get these lines a little bit darker I'm not sure I'd, I'd like to go for that dire knot style illustration with this but there's so much detail with this character compared to others that maybe I could use my sort of line art here I, I just have to I just have to see Let's see, this is coming out here, and we could assume doing that. Let's, uh, let's flip. Nice. Yeah, I think the, both the cane, which we still need to add, and the other arm are nice indicators for us that kind of fleshes out and finishes this because we the parts that we've drawn already are the biggest sort of offenders, if you will, of that uh, curve. 
coming that way, and the skirt, the hair, this arm, and this cane are all sort of supporting or contradicting and contrasting that curve. So let's come in here. Let's uh, let's start a new layer because we can then create sort of the box. of the crossbow, box of the crossbow, let's connect these lines like this, and that way we just have some, some guidelines, um, let's see, we can decide if we like this or not, hmm, 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 Bring this over, come straight up and down. Okay. Maybe we will have it kind of tapering forward or tapering backwards so that it's larger at the front. And does this work for us? Like, can we lay our stuff out? Does it look right? She's sort of holding it the, the right way if it comes out this way. Okay, like that. Pretty good. We'll erase this because we don't need it. We will uh, lay out our. I think that the main thing is our crossbow here. What's that look like? I don't expect it to be right on the first try. Uh, it's not bad, actually. Wow, I was expecting I had more trouble with that. Um, it's pretty good, yeah. So if we can come in, we'll add this, whatever this sort of is, and we'll allow it to have its two little umlauts, and maybe... Um, how do we kind of keep this? I think just by using a different color. We can have this maybe come forward. Although they're uh, the same piece, right? I think these all, these pieces all go together. So I'll add some thickness here, like a, a band that's restraining this. I'll add a little piece underneath it as well. And this will come forward. And now, because we know these pieces should be together and not kind of lower the way that I had it before, we'll bring this over and fill it in. Okay. And let's uh, thicken this arm up a bit. Oh, that kind of defeats what I just did, right? Um, go thicker from there and here. Um, but if those are thicker, then the string being thinner works a lot better. This loop we might shrink just a tad, depending on the kind of perspective that we're dealing with. Uh, no, it's good because it's a little bit, it's closer to us than that one. Okay, let's add our uh, latch piece for a bolt. Now I don't know what that looks like really. I'm almost drawing it independently of the rest. Yeah, that's that's not bad. We can bring a hook up like this. And come down across. Uh, let's see. We probably want a curve here and a, a 
release, right? Keep it, keep it. Okay. Good. And this will kind of get blocked by our hand, uh, but let's not draw it yet course. Uh, I will create a little barrier here uh, to the grip portion. Like so. And now it's time to add our telescope. I think I'll go an additional layer on top of this for that. good stuff we're 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 flying here i i was i think a bit frustrated with our first pass on this character um and this is a very different uh, the process isn't different for me than usual but the whole added element of recording every little piece of this and kind of talking through it is is been an interesting not so much challenge but you know it's a it's something extra you're dealing with in there. Uh, so kind of when things weren't coming across or coming out the way I was hoping to immediately, you know, the panic sets in or the, the idea of like, oh, how many, how many three hour videos is this going to take before I land on something that looks good, right? Um, because there's a sort of added time element to it for me. Uh, but this is, this is good. We're landing on something good. Um, on the stage, if you will, of this video series, which is nice. Wasn't expecting that. Hopefully it continues to turn out well. Okay, so we're adding a band here for our uh, flute eyeglass telescope. And we'll add this around the bottom. And... Uh, that's not a great cylinder, but we'll take it. Okay, um, and now it's kind of the same as we were doing with the bandage wrapping on her legs, but to a more extreme degree. I'm going to take this in. I'm going to decide sort of where my segments are, I think, like right here. Oops, too thick of a line. About here and here. Right? Seems about right. Let's uh, let's come in more. I like the idea that it collapses even more. So we'll go here and here. Let me just check these lines real quick by flipping, just to be sure. Uh, let's see. Let's hide our original. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. So we're just looking at our flute right now. So. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut in here on the segment itself so that it's not a straight line anymore, but a curving one, kind of bell end out at the end. And then I'm also going to take this next line and we will come in a bit and hit that same line above so that it's sort of cascading segments. Okay, and over here. And yeah, and yeah, and yeah. Same up here. And as we kind of figure out that it's smaller and smaller, we can exaggerate that, cut it down even more, um, and then take the walls of this section and do the same bending if it works. If it's too much, we'll, we can backtrack. Okay. 
I want to give a, a shout out to the guy at the gym that I saw yesterday with a shirt that said, no mistakes, just happy accidents, and a picture of Bob Ross on it. And I am flattered by the comparisons that this video series especially, but other videos of mine have gotten, which are like the Bob Ross of character design, uh, which is like the coolest compliment I can look like. Who could, who could be upset about hearing that? Thank you, guys. <laughs> but shout out to that guy at the gym. He had an awesome mustache. And what a thing to wear to a gym, right? Like, listen. We're all here because we're, we're unsatisfied, perhaps. Or, or a lot of us, so. So why go in the pretense of, of everything being perfect? Okay. Now we will add some flute paraphernalia. We will just kind of add two of these buttons here and I'll maybe one like this that kind of jogging button that I talked about liking before and maybe a second one coming up and over cut this like so And our second section, we can add actual buttons on top of and cut away the insides. And um, maybe just one key like that on the edge. And uh, just little holes, right? And maybe a, a single button on our final piece. How does this collapse without the buttons hitting each other? That's not an answer that we need. We don't need the answer to that question because this is a silly character design and a very stylized prop. So we don't have to worry a ton about that. But it would be a good question. Uh, let's see, we could even add sort of that mouthpiece. No, we'll leave that for our, our cane. Okay, so that's in. Let's, uh, let's Erase everything occluded by the flute. Let's give it a flip, make sure everything looks good. Looks nice. Uh, if I'm bending on the bottom here, we need to make sure we're doing the same. Or rather, on the bottom as on the top. Okay. Nice. Just a cane and some hair to go. And then we will move into part three, which will be rendering. Excited about that. Okay, I'm going to hide my initial reference and this, all this stuff just so I can get to my flute reference over here. We've, we've come a long way from this initial pose. Nothing necessarily wrong with it. Uh, but, I mean, that, that original face and stuff, it was just so plain, and the, the, the idea of who she was was not coming through. I think if you said, hey, look, she's a scout, with this one, uh, people would agree. People would keep, people would grok it. Okay, let's, uh, do the same thing that we just did. Let's rather push these lines out a little bit. So, let's come in here. And let's make sure we're not overlapping a ton. We do need this information, unfortunately, for the the bustle. Almost said bindle. Okay. Hopefully that line isn't bad. We can always move it. Uh, we'll come down and add another. Uh, our initial thing here, where, where's the best window to throw your iPad out of? Where's the best place to add this piece? I think it's right about there. Best angle. 
so that because that's kind of like that little saddle with the hole I think is the most recognizable piece of a flute at least to someone like me who's never played one so that seems about right never been much of a flautist okay we will add one more and I like this sort of bell and then bevel that we have with these pieces although we do need to taper down if we want to match that sort of initial thing. My lines have gone completely off here. Okay, yep, there we go, nice. Good bevel cutting across. Uh, clearly marked bevel on this side. Okay, and then we'll just come down and finish off the sort of come on man bendy end of this here ah oh, come on almost there and it knows it okay we'll add some keys and things after some holes we'll do key and key We'll do, uh, I liked these. I did play a bit of saxophone in my youth. So I can add things like this and know that there were similar things on a flute. We'll add some uh, buttons up here that kind of go in that indent. And I think just like a button here. And a little bump there. I think we've basically got it at that point, right? And maybe just like a, a bar here. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully the line quality is good there. It's decent enough draftsmanship. And should we do one more segment? I don't know. I don't know. Let's come in under here, cut this out, bring the opacity back up of this, and erase what we can underneath the flute, and then bring this down with us into the layer. Just want to clean up a couple of spots up here. A little rough. Okay. And let's bring that back up. Yeah, it looks pretty good. As long as we've got some color definition in there, we should be okay. I'm going to merge that down. Oh, and I merged my... That was too soon. Because I do still have an arm left to do. Okay, so let's bring this back in. We've got the cuff of the hand coming in here, wrapping here. The arm is cutting it right there. It's, it should be more there, but I want to avoid this part of the dress. Okay. Wrap that a little bit more. And sort of, what's the... We're looking kind of like this, right? So... A finger there, a finger here, one kind of coming up and out. Hopefully that's not too extreme, it might be. Okay, wow, that finger is a bit on the fat side. We'll give it an actual bend, so we can tell what's happening there. And I, uh, I'm not sure. Let's 
see what I have a bit of wrist bone. I think that's decent. I don't know if it's the best hand there's ever been, but if we even add a thumb coming up on the other side, uh, make this finger bigger than the one that it's next to. Yikes, I'm not super sure about that. Okay, hiding this and just coming in to the final. And let's see what we can do about hair. I think between part two and part three, I will double check that hand. I'm at a sort of fatigue point with it, so forgive me. Okay, let's see. This hair can be, um, a little bit of it can be coming across there. No. Maybe one curl coming this way. I just want to keep it messy, right? Um, can't have volume. And we want frizzy stuff just kind of sticking out where we can. Um, there we go, behind the shoulder, uh, coming across here, yeah, like that. That looks like volume though, so we got to be careful. Cut this in, cut that in, might even hug sort of the forehead area, don't want that line. And can we go a little bit further? Okay. And a lot, another thing that we'll do in our rendering is sort of add the, the dirt and soot and kind of filth overall. Uh, but that is where we've landed, I think, uh, with some little refinements here and there. We are about ready for rendering. So thank you guys for... Oh, <laughs> thanks for checking it out, and uh, thanks for bearing with me if you've gotten to this point. When we come back, we'll finish this character up. Exciting stuff.